opportunities for the people of this great province. The Supply Act is one of the cornerstone acts in this legislature. Passage of the Supply Act would, con would constitute the final authorization needed by the legislature of the government's program spending for the fiscal year that is coming to a close. Again, I urge all members of the legislature to, supply the, to support the Supply Act because without this necessary spending authority, the people of this province would be denied the opportunities they deserve. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here, here. Uh, further debate, the member for Leeds Grenville. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I just want to say before I start that uh, I'm wearing a purple tie today for uh, epilepsy awareness. So I, I wanted that into the record, uh, Speaker. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, very interesting when we're uh, having debate this afternoon. It, it likens me to, uh, to want to put on the record my opinion about the future of Ontario's fiscal health. And I have to tell you, in my opinion, uh, I don't think the patient's doing very well. I think the, uh, the prognosis isn't good uh, in the province of Ontario right now because under nearly a decade under the uh, mcginty Wynn government, uh, the patient's struggling, Speaker. I think the strong, robust economy that this government inherited back in 2003 is looking rather weak and anemic in 2013. Uh, speaker, we're no longer the envy of all the other provinces in Canada. Ontario is now a uh, have-not province, and we have to look to, uh, for the kindness of others uh, to help uh, make ends meet. Even with that charity from other provinces, those provinces, I might add, Speaker, that do have their economic fundamentals right, uh, the Liberal government in this, province, in this province still can't manage to make ends meet. Uh, we're sa saddled with a staggering $12 billion deficit and a provincial debt that's spiraling out of control, which now stands at $235 billion. An unbelievable 78% increase over the past nine years. You know, Speaker, I could stand here for a lot longer than the, uh, than the minutes that I uh, am going to be here uh, to recite statistic after statistic on how bad things have become. But I, I'm going to just give you one statistic, Speaker, one number that I want everyone watching to remember, and that number is 600,000. Speaker, that's the number of Ontarians that uh, woke up this morning without a job. Uh, we also know there are countless others in communities across Ontario struggling desperately to hold on to things as the rising cost of doing business in, in Ontario, the rising cost of living in Ontario uh, is increasing rapidly. And the example that we use on this side of the house is the cost of, uh, of, of energy. Uh, many of those 600,000 people, Speaker, uh, saw their good jobs in Ontario through our manufacturing sector disappear. And now they're trying to support their families uh, with uh, part-time or minimum wage jobs. You know, Speaker, it wasn't always like that. And I, and I remember uh, a, a couple of speakers uh, ago, uh, my friend Mr. Prue, uh, talked about when he was in his 20s. And I, I remember when I was in my 20s, how that this province, uh, we were the envy of the rest of Canada. I remember graduating from university and I got involved in uh, municipal politics, was, uh, was a mayor of uh, a city in my riding, Brockville. And I can remember how proud I was as a municipal leader in this province, how I worked with the members of my council and the communities within both that city and, and, and with other communities in eastern Ontario to help bring new jobs to our community and new prosperity. But the, 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 the reality in, in communities today is, is it certainly changed. And you talk to municipal leaders, you don't uh, necessarily have that level of optimism that you had so many decades ago. And, and I know in my, uh, my speech, and I know my friend, uh, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington is here, and he and I both spoke last week about our families, some of our kids that have left the province of Ontario, have left this province for jobs in, in other provinces. And how sad, how angry, that, that makes us feel that the, those young people who have left this province, who, who will build their families, buy their houses, create that prosperity, have chosen a, another province. I think we need to change that, Speaker. We need to make a change, get our economic fundamentals right, and provide some hope 
and optimism for those young people for the future of this province. And, and I listened to the motion, and, and, I, and I hear some members talk about this motion as being routine. Well, when you talk about this Liberal government and mention the word spending, nothing is routine when it comes to the Liberal government and spending taxpayers' money. The single most important thing we can do as a government is to manage the economy. And a government must ensure the decisions it makes don't impoverish future generations with unmanageable debt levels that threaten our most valued services, things like health and education. But that's what's happened in Ontario, Speaker. Bad decision after bad decision, mismanagement after mismanagement, scandal after scandal have dug us in a hole that has put the quality of life for our children and grandchildren in jeopardy. Now, I, I, I want to say, Speaker, I think we need to reverse the course that we're on or the terrible news that uh, we see in the media from uh, countries like Greece and Cyprus. I'm so worried that those are going to be the headlines in the province of Ontario uh, someday in the future. Hard-working Ontarians, their children and their grandchildren deserve better than what they're getting from the McWinty win government. Uh, we need to stand up and I think we need to, uh, as, a, as an opposition, uh, treat that uh, role that we play with, with a lot of respect. And I, and I take offence uh, to uh, some members' uh, assertions that this is a routine motion. Uh, we have to demand accountability from our government and demand those answers to the various serious questions that members on this side of the House are asking. That's why the people in our ridings elected us to stand up and not to give the government a free pass uh, like it's been done. The, say, the old saying goes, that was then, this is now, Speaker. And I think that's very important because we're at a crossroads. And I think, again, we need to make some bold action to get our economic fundamentals right. Uh, and I think we in the Ontario PC Party are doing that. It's, it's all about showing leadership in the province of Ontario. And, and, I, and I have to tell you, Speaker, that... Uh, that uh, when I, I looked at uh, the, uh, the throne speech, and I made some comments last week uh, about the throne speech that uh, was given here back on February 19th, and uh, none of the bills that the government has put forward right now uh, look at, and I know the, uh, one of the members uh, opposite just started talking and naming some of those bills, the bills that, that he mentioned uh, don't do anything to reduce our debt and our deficit. They don't do anything to encourage private sector investment. And they don't do anything to help those 600,000 men and women that woke up this morning uh, without a job. In fact, uh, in that speech I quoted last week that the government referred to fiscally res uh, fiscal responsibility, economic growth and increased, um, increased employment being the bedrocks of which the McGinty Wynn government is going to build their plan. Well, I tell you, I didn't hear any bedrock in that, uh, in that speech at all. In fact, I think it's quicksand that uh, they were talking about more importantly. And, and, and quite frankly, I think we're up to our neck in quicksand from this government and we need to change. The other thing I want to talk about is, is the shocking position that I, I see with members of the, of the third party on this motion. And uh, I know they must be hearing the same when, uh, when they're in their writings. Their constituents must be telling them that, uh, that we need to change our approach in, uh, in this province. Yet, once again, it appears, Speaker, that the NDP are once again going to give the government a free pass. Uh, and, and that's sad to hear. They're going to give them more time to continue implementing the kinds of policies that have put Ontario in the mess that it's in. We saw it last year, Speaker, with the budget. NDP members went out and they talked about how terrible it was with the government planning to kill 60,000 rural Ontario jobs with, with its attack on the horse racing industry. But when it came time for them to stand in their place and stand up for those 60,000 jobs, the NDP sat on their hands and they allowed this budget to pass. And we know that's why we're seeing the job losses and the loss of investment in rural riding. So, you know, I ask them, what are you prepared to do this year? Are you prepared to sit on your hands or are you prepared to stand up uh, for, for those, uh, those issues in the government? We've got the billion dollar gas plant scandal, the debacle at Orange, and the continuing embarrassment at eHealth. Uh, the member for uh, Kitchener-Conestoga talked about the, uh, the PhD 
that, uh, that Orange uh, funded uh, for the C CEO. It's, uh, it's terrible. The, the amount of uh, mounting debt and deficits, the lack of a plan that this government has, its green energy policies. The member for Huron-Bruce tabled a, a great piece of legislation that uh, I hope other uh, parties will support. These things and many more uh, were given a pass upon by the NDP party, the third party. While it's been our party that has stood up repeatedly and brought bold ideas to the table, our party is the party that has the plan. There's no plan over there, Speaker. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of meaningful conversation. I think the uh, talking points was we like to have we like to have conversations. Well, you know what? Ontarians are asking for action, Speaker. They're asking to turn around the terrible economic policies that this government put forward. Speaker, I am going to join with members of my party and vote against this bill. And I'm very glad to uh, to have the opportunity to speak this afternoon. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Once again, an honour to stand in this house and speak on behalf of the residents of uh, my great riding of Temiskaming Cochrane. Uh, no, my great <laughs> residents of Temiskaming Cochrane. And, and before I start talking about the, the Interim Supply Act, I, would, I had the opportunity this morning to travel to a part of the province I haven't been to before. It was in Lucan. Ah, and I, I had the opportunity to be on a nice farm in Lucan, and I would like to, I would, I've been a farmer all my life, and there's always one day when spring awakens, and you can smell it, and you can feel it, and in my part of the province, it's not going to be for a while, because we've still got <laughs> two and a half feet of snow, but today, but today in Lucan, or outside of Lucan on that farm, home the black guy. yeah, and that's something, and yeah, and it's a great ride. And there's and there's and there's something that smell and that feeling is what is what is what makes a difference between people in the country and people in big cities because a lot of people who live in big cities have never had that that where you feel the earth awakening and you know sometimes in the country us farmers we're so busy that we 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 miss that too but today you know, in the in the conservative members' writing in Lucan, I'd really it deserves a mention. Today was the first real day of spring there. You could smell it. You don't want to be talking you could, about the you could smell. billion dollars. You could smell. Oh, I'm I'm gonna get to that. Gonna get to that. So what we're talking about today, what we're talking about today is the interim supply act. And yes, if if we vote against this act. The government will fall, and that is what that is what that is what the conservatives want without even looking at the budget, without reading the budget. But if we if the government falls on an interim supply act, you will also get chaos. You will also get chaos because the only people who will be able the only people who will be able to regulate the money supply in this province will be the cabinet. So really. So really, the conservatives, the progressive conservatives are saying, you know what, we don't want the legislature to control the money supply, we want the cabinet to control it. No, you want the cabinet to control it. And, you know what, <laughs> oh but yes, the, the, the government has shown how well they can manage money. I think we can agree. I think we can agree that we, on this side of the house, that we have some problems with how, some big problems, with how the government manages money but this act is about and it's not a routine act we're talking about a lot of money you know we are talking about a lot of money but there's a difference between making